Alright folks, so we are going to be looking at a couple of clips from Bill Maher's recent Real Time with Bill Maher episode. Now, if you guys know anything about Bill Maher, you guys are aware about Bill Maher's descent into madness and massive uh, just ridiculousness and stupidity. Now, part of that, and I would say a big portion of that has to do with the fact that he's incredibly wealthy. Now, I don't know what his net worth or how much money he has is. I'm sure his net worth is in the millions. He's definitely a millionaire for sure. He's a very wealthy guy. And so anytime you're very wealthy, you're going to lose touch with normal people. And he's kind of gone from being more, more of a social democrat to now just being a neoliberal. And so he started out by just shilling for Hillary nonstop, and now he's really gone downhill. If you don't know, jo uh, I was about to say Joe Biden, Bill Maher actually had endorsed Bernie Sanders back in the 2016 primary, which is pretty crazy. And the last time he had Bernie on, he said, if you run again, I'm going to support you. Apparently, he has reneged on that promise. So we're going to be looking at a couple of clips here. Before, before we get into that, though, I want to let you guys know, I'm over on Patreon, patreon.com slash the progressive voice. If you go over there and become a patron, you can access a bunch of premium content, uh, a couple of videos on Lunatic Nico House, Defending Tulsi Gabbard, some Sam Harris, uh, David Pakman stuff, Destiny content, Kyle Klinsky, etc., etc. So go over there, um, patreon.com slash the progressive voice. Make sure to go over there and to pledge over there if you want to access that content. But with that said, uh, let us go ahead and jump into these clips. So... This first clip, you guys probably know who Crystal Ball is. Crystal Ball was a former MSNBC uh, host, as well as I believe she had run for Congress and almost won, but there was some sort of a scandal, I should say with quotes, because it really wasn't one. Um, but uh, she almost, I believe she had almost won. She was at least a congressional candidate. And Bill Maher has gone from endorsing Bernie Sanders and saying he would support Bernie Sanders to now saying that he wants Amy Klobuchar. Insanity. Let's hear this out. What, that's what the Democrats can, have to stop. Can I present a scenario? I think this might be one of those years where it's the, well, the discussion Mike and I were having. It's that they can't get over that centrist versus socialist thing. So Elizabeth Warren at some point takes Bernie's voters. He drops out. It's Warren and Biden. But and they go to the convention, and it's deadlocked. This has happened before in American yeah. politics, and they need a compromise candidate. I'm looking hard at Amy Klobuchar. You know why? Because, like, the, this is not an insult to Amy Klobuchar. I like you. But when they put generic Democrat on yeah. the ballot, they win. So you don't win. have a fit. Yeah. No. She's a woman, so, like, that you know, helps. Win. That moves a lot Hold with the rest of a wokesters. And then she's why a Why do you think that economic populism, whatever you want to call it, socialism, democratic socialism, et cetera, Medicare for all is so unpopular. When a poll just came out that had Bernie Sanders beating Trump in Texas by more than any of the other candidates, the last 20 polls have shown Bernie Sanders beating Trump. And here's the other thing though. Meaning? Meaning that you don't need a centrist to win. Centrism is why we have lost, it's why we lost well, a thousand first state of, house yeah. it's why we lost the lineup, we ran a centrist, we lost. <laughs> That's exactly true. That's exactly true. So she did a really good job there of explaining basically how centrism has failed us and why we would be stupid to repeat it. Einstein said that insanity was doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. That's what you'd be doing here. We just ran Hillary Clinton, who is a centrist. Why in God's name would we do that again? She was such a horrifyingly bad candidate. You could not imagine in your worst nightmare as a worst candidate would be impossible, seriously. But how is Klobuchar, how is she a compromise candidate? And why would war, his whole hypothetical is completely insane and out there. It doesn't make any sense, not even in the beginning. Because first of all, why would Bernie's voters go to Warren? Bernie's voters, as of right now, the polls indicate that his voters would go to Biden. So that doesn't even make sense. What, how it would go to Warren. I don't even understand that. But then you're talking about uh, Warren and Biden, which is like, why are we there anyways? Like, if you're going to do a compromise, wouldn't it be like Warren drops out, her voters go to Bernie, which statistically they wouldn't, or delegates or whatever you're talking about here. If we're talking about delegates here, then you drop out. Let's say Warren drops out, gives her delegates to Bernie, and then there's Biden, and then there was some sort of in-between the two. 
that would be a, a compromise, but why would you do Warren? Warren's not even as far left as Bernie is, so how are you going to have a... You're already compromising before the compromise. It doesn't make sense. But then you're talking about how is Amy Klobuchar a compromise between Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren? Amy Klobuchar is the same as Biden. What's the difference between the two? One thing I will say is I respect about Amy... The one thing that I respect about Amy Klobuchar is at least she's not like Kamala Harris where she just outright lies about her progressiveness. So I do, you know, uh, while I completely wholeheartedly disagree with Klobuchar and think she's terrible, uh, in addition to that, I would say that I do have some respect because she's openly a moderate. She openly talks about that. She openly explains that. Now, sometimes I know I saw a recent quote of her saying, oh, no, I'm progressive. I just like to get stuff done. That's a stupid talking point. That doesn't make any sense, and it's a lie. You're either a progressive or you're not. Don't give me that uh, bogey nonsense that you're trying to trying to give me. Um, the other thing about Amy Klobuchar, she throws binders at people. I don't think you want a president like that. I really don't. And her defense of her doing that was, we need to stand up to Putin. What does it have to do with any with you being horrible to your staff? Really, bro? You're throwing binders at them? Come on, dude. But seriously, why would we do that compromise? How is that a compromise? A, we're not getting anything. A compromise is when two sides come to a midway point. That's not a midway point for anybody. That would just be taking the centrist. That's just giving the centrist what they want. That's just choosing a centrist. The middle ground would be like Elizabeth Warren would be the middle ground, is what I would say. Uh, you know, so that doesn't even make sense in the first place, but... This is a really bad, you know, sort of degeneracy on the part of, of Bill Maher because <sighs> I have to tell you, man, going from supporting Bernie and endorsing Bernie and supporting him wholeheartedly to now talking about how you want Amy Klobuchar. And by the way, I want to explain to you guys that there has been, it's not just Bill Maher that's saying it, there's a bunch of establishment types who are trying to artificially boost Amy Klobuchar by claiming, claiming somehow that she is the most electable candidate. I don't understand how that works. doesn't make any sense. Her All of her support is in Minnesota as of right now, and she doesn't have much of it. doesn't have much of the support in the first place. But uh, Nate Silver, who's an establishment hack as well as, I believe it was, it was Washington Post or New York Times, put out an op-ed stating that it's a bunch of bogey. The most electable candidate is Bernard Sanders. That is the guy who is the most electable. And to jump into that electable conversation... He also got into a really deep back and forth with Michael Moore, and I recommend you check out the rest of that clip. I'm not going to show the whole thing. It's just a small clip. But they really get into a pretty deep shouting match, and uh, Michael Moore is pretty good most of the time. Sometimes he'll go a little bit off the rails. Like, I remember one time he said that the Democrats need a celeb just like the Republicans have Trump, which is really stupid. But for the most part, he's pro-Bernie and pro-working class, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So let's go ahead and hear this portion out. And Michigan, we are going to win the polls if yeah. we do these right. things. Uh, we can Maybe. win. We don't you know. Mean, You're not Nostradamus. We well, I know, that, uh, I know that Bernie, uh, Bernie, and the, Bernie won Michigan, and Bernie won Wisconsin, it. and then she wouldn't go there. But the last guy that who really, nuts. the last guy who really won big was Barack Obama. He was a centrist. No, he wasn't. He he governed as a centrist. He ran as a populist. No, he didn't. He ran. He ran. I voted. I, and anyway, so what you're looking at there is. They got into a back and forth about who the candidate could be to win states like Michigan. Basically, it was like, oh, you're talking about winning places like California. We've already got those on lock. We need to get Wisconsin, Wisconsin and Michigan. So I guess someone like Amy Klobuchar is supposed to be able to take those states, which makes no sense whatsoever. But Bernie Sanders is the one who will take those states easily. And the sort of dividing issue on that is the economic populism and his protectionism, as we've talked about so many different times here. The reason why those people voted for Obama was because he was calling for change and trying to, you know, he was he was marketing himself as the hope and change guy who's going to bring, you know, this sort of big change for people. Um, he didn't end up doing that, so they ended up voting Donald Trump instead of Hillary Clinton because Hillary Clinton did not hold a protectionist position. She did not want to bring the jaws back. She said TPP was the gold standard, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Therefore, he lost. She lost the election there. Now, Bernie would win the Rust Belt back in a legitimate heartbeat, not only because of that, but because he's just legitimately a good campaigner in terms of being an active campaigner going everywhere. So whatever you say about Obama, Obama was a pretty bad president, I'd say. At best, he's like 
maybe a little below mediocre, but I, I think he did pretty bad. Um, he was a good campaigner. He was a very active campaigner. He also knew how to campaign and how to win. That's how he did win. He basically would go full on progressive, and then once he turn it came to being president, he took a sort of rightward turn, is what he did. So, and I don't know, Bill Maher's quote about like, how do you know you're not not Nostradamus? Also kind of weird. Um, it's pretty obvious as to why Bernie would win. It's just basic, uh, basic understanding of what's going on. Even the polling data, even the polling data had Bernie over Trump in those states. So I don't even understand how that worked. The polls had Bernie completely crushing Donald Trump. It, it was pretty insane. The numbers, nationally speaking, they were really going ham on Trump in favor of Bernard Sanders. So this makes no sense. And Bill Maher has completely lost his marbles. And it's pretty sad. Now, a lot of people already dislike him. I obviously dislike him as well. Uh, that's the final straw for me in terms of Bill Maher. At this point, Bill Maher is completely worthless. Because I was holding on to like, okay, I hate him on everything else. But the, la the thing that doesn't make me hate him 100% is, alright, at least he supports Bernie Sanders. At least he endorsed Bernie Sanders. Well... Turns out that's not what he's doing anymore. Turns out he's talking about Amy Klobuchar. So, hi, yay, folks. It can't get any worse than this. It really can't get any worse than this. And the fact that he's gone this downhill, and shout out to Crystal Ball, as well as Michael Moore, for sort of going up and, and defending uh, Bernie and, and progressive populism and actual progressivism, because that is the way that we win. That's how we win. And any other ideal. And it's funny because it's like, we literally just ran a centrist, as Crystal Ball pointed out, and she lost. Why on earth would you, you know, again, let me repeat, Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Why would we run a centrist again? That's a terrible idea. When you are talking about getting elected, you want someone who's going to energize people. First of all, Amy Klobuchar is not interesting at all. All of her support is completely manufactured, and any little support she has is just in Minnesota itself, because that's the state that she's from. But she has no real support. Any sort of idea that she's electable or any support like that, it's all manufactured. It's all fake, kind of like the way that uh, Pete Buttigieg's support was. It was all fake. It was synthetic. It was made up. It was totally just out of thin air. Um... But you need someone who's going to energize the electorate, who's going to excite people to come out. Why would anybody be like, I can't wait to vote for Amy Klobuchar? The only way that would be is if she has a binder ready to throw at you. Um, and you're sort of, you know, I guess in that situation where you got to vote or get the binder thrown at you. But I'd rather get hit by a binder. I don't know about you guys, but that's what I would choose.